Happy Father's Day. The dad's in the house. Uh, it's great to have the it's great to have the early arrivers in, the non uh, second song people here to celebrate Father's Day. And uh, honestly, it is just so cool to be together. Hey, we just let's be mindful that there's still a bunch of sickness buzzing around, and um, let's be intentional. After we're finished here today, when we look around and go, who are the people that would normally be here in the first service? Um, let's think about maybe connecting with them, seeing if they're okay, and seeing if there's anything we can do to help. Because this is not our spiritual coffee shop. This is not where we come to get our spiritual products and services. It's our family. We're being formed together to be like Jesus. We're learning to receive God's love and to reflect it to those around us. So uh, let's be real intentional uh, with our connections, not just here, but the connections that flow from here. Uh, of course, we have the wonderful Linda uh, there in her high vis just for your benefit today. Uh, it's not that she uh, was told to wear a lot of chartreuse yellow. Uh, it's actually just that she's um, being mindful of our safety. Did you say you don't know what chartreuse is? Someone's never worked in a, in a sports shop with fly tying. Yeah, a lot of fluoro chartreuse apparently. There you go. You've learned something today. There you go. Chartreuse yellow. Fluorescent yellow. That's its actual name. Look at that. See, your world's been enlarged because you came to church today. Because you came to church. Mind blown. That's it. That's exactly it. Hey, uh, let's get into it this morning. Why don't we jump to our feet? We're going we're gonna to praise. Out of the darkness 
Praise this morning. Thank you, Lord. I didn't rescue my sin was heavy. Chains break at the way of your glory. I need a shelter. I was an orphan. Now you call me a citizen of heaven. When I was broke.
this word that maybe there were some men here this morning that needed some healing and it was by the song not necessarily the words but through the melody and the sound that God wanted to come and touch your heart so if that's you we're just going to play over you this morning as a way to connect with us and there is something on sound who flows with it so God we just ask that for those of us in the room that needs healing you would just come and rest on this music on the melody on the sound
Almost respond to the psalmist's invitation to come and magnify the Lord with him. Lord, as we come to this place, Lord, as we uh, sing together, as we lift our voices, as we as we pray together, Father God, as we just remind ourselves how good you are. Lord, as we remind ourselves what you've done, that you've released us from the captivity of slavery to our broken desires. Uh, you've made us truly free to come and to worship the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Lord, for your praise to always be on our lips, to live a life of increasing faithfulness to you, our King. God, we pray you'd have your way in our hearts. Lord, we remember that whatever we do for you is just a response to your benevolent love towards us. It's because you first loved us that we are here. It's your love. us together, Father God. Your love is the mortar in the house that you're building with living stones, lives surrendered to you, being shaped for your glory and your purpose, being shaped to carry your presence and minister your grace. God, we thank you for your faithfulness this morning. We 
thank you that you are who you say you are. We thank you that you are the perfect Father. And we bless you and honour you this morning. And everybody said, Amen. Awesome. Well, what a joy to be together, have the family in as we do. Uh, make that habit weekly to, to come and to, to pray the story of God, to sing the story of God, to hear the story of God. That shapes our lives. And looking forward to hearing from Pastor Jamie. He's going to share a word uh, this morning. But we've got just a little bit of family biz uh, that we uh, need to do uh, today. In fact, a little bit of uh, update, really, just on what's been going on in the life of the church. Uh, you may have noticed that we are meeting in this building these days. Uh, you drive here most weeks, so hopefully you've noticed. Uh, but obviously it's been a huge journey from where we were at the end of last year, uh, meeting in Mountain View Auditorium. Uh, and then we've come into this space, which has been, uh, I guess, a little bit disconnected to what we're used to. But we're grateful for God's provision, aren't we? That we actually have our own home, that we're in it, that we're able to um, just inhabit the space, really, which is certainly these spaces were set out for us. But we also came here and purchased the place nearly oh, over two years ago now um, because of the potential that was sitting next door. And uh, we're excited about seeing that renovated and move forward so that we could inhabit that. Uh, uh, the plan was always that this would be our kids' church space. Uh, and we are looking forward to it being that sometime in the ne near future. But we spoke at the end of last year when we lost our lease, uh, Mount of View, about trying to put together a chapel, uh, a small um, kind of gathering space in the front uh, of the warehouse so that we could uh, fit into it uh, and have a little bit more space than we have now. But like everything else, every plan seems to have been frustrated in this season. And uh, I apologize for the lack of information flowing to you around that. The reality is I haven't had any information to give you despite our best efforts and uh, chasing people and getting particular professionals <coughs> involved as we've needed to, whether it's engineers around what we'd need to do with the council, whether it's the council waiting for them months to come back to us to say what we would need to do to do what we want to do. Uh, but we have an update for you today. And so I've actually got a little bit of a, a taste for you of what we are looking to inhabit, which is very, very exciting. And if I can have the first photo up, Anyone recognize this? So when you walk through the kids, what's now the kids' spaces and take a hard right and go right to the big sliding door in the front of the warehouse. So this is where the chapel's going to go. So if you're standing in that corner, then this is what you will see. You can move the next one. Yeah. This is a 120-square-meter um, auditorium. That oh, it's going to be called the chapel, which will be the smaller of the auditoriums that we're looking to develop. We've got enough room to do this plus a 350-seater next door. And so uh, this will be our first step. It'll be called our chapel simply because it's going to be great in the future to have a smaller space for meetings that you can fit 120 or so people in comfortably. Uh, this makes sense because unless we go through some major hoops with the council, which we will do, uh, as soon as we've finished this project, we'll go into getting a, a change of use process, uh, which means we can turn this into a place of gathering and we'd probably look to lift the limit of the building to sort of 499. Um, but at the moment, it's, we've got a, a permission for 100. So we can do this work. We've done everything we need to do with the council to actually get going with this work. So if we can have the next the next uh, one. So that's uh, on the opposite corner. So the far, that far corner of the building looking back. And if we can have that next view, that'd be awesome. So that will that we'll have a little corner stage. Um, the current, we've got some windows in there. You'll see in the back middle there, there's some windows uh, which uh, the ones that are there, they're double glazed. That will become like a, um, a kid's mum and bub's room um, so they can look straight in to see what's happening, which is great. And then there were those double doors here. That's how you get in, which means when you come into the, come into the building, you'll turn immediately right, and where the cafe space is at the moment, there'll be double doors that go straight into this auditorium. So it'll be a real natural flow off the kind of um, foyer space we've got at the moment. Either come straight down here for kids or you turn right to go and to be in the chapel. Could the next one, please, Rob? Yeah, so this is looking back into that corner. This is only using a very small part of the space we've got out there. Next one, mate. Yeah. I 
is right. Yeah, yeah, that's it. We are looking to put a window, and these are just uh, give you a taste. Is this helping anyone realize what we're actually trying to do? Awesome. It helped Dave a lot, didn't they? <laughs> yeah, next one. Yeah. I'm like, I've been seeing this since we moved in. I've just been waiting for it to happen. Uh, but that's how my brain works. So looking back into that corner, looking back at Rothwell Street, and the last one, please, mate. Yeah. So it looked like that, which is pretty cool, eh? So um, think about, um, does anyone remember the um, auditorium we had at HQ? So we had the HQ auditorium on the first floor. So it's similar size to that, but instead of being only uh, this high roof all the way through, uh, in the middle, where you can see it slants up, that's six metres high in the middle. So that's actually the full height of the warehouse next door. So you're going to have a real sense of space. It won't be claustrophobic at all. Um, there'll be a real sense of being able to um, have that place full but not feeling suffocated, which is a nice feeling to be able to breathe like good air, like healthy air, helpful air. So um, apparently we're going to be doing suits. Um, the board did ask, how's there, who's preaching? Because there's only about four people there. It must be terrible. Uh, and, and we promptly agreed it was probably the AGM. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, it was good to get that resolved. Um, yeah, so that was it. that's the thing. Is that helpful for anyone to see what we're doing in that space? Would you like some good news? The concrete floor for that is being poured next Saturday. And so that is going to be poured, and we are, so that, uh, 140 square metres of concrete. So we'll just do that. So that's about that thick. It's going to go on the bottom because the floor's a bit broken up, but the working bee did a whole bunch of stuff uh, last week and getting some waterproofing done and getting a whole lot of stuff sorted out. So it's so close we can almost taste it. I'd love to give you all of the final details and final costings, but we are still waiting on some of those. But we have enough to get a, get started and get into it. And so, but we would take this opportunity, and we will over the next couple of weeks. We'll bring that information to you as we have it. But really invite you if you haven't financially partnered with us on the building yet, it would be great uh, if you've got that money that you know you got back from your tax last year, and it's just sitting around. You're going, God, what would you have me do with it? Boy, have I got an opportunity for you. Boy, have I got a deal for you. Uh, on our um, website, there's actually a separate number for our building fund, and uh, we'd actually just invite you. I know a lot of people, there's a bunch of people who have been with us on the journey. They've seen the miracle of us buying this place and getting into it, who at the time couldn't do anything big. Remember, we raised about $300,000 to get into this building over a very short space of time to add to the 45000 we had. And there's some people that couldn't contribute at the time. And so they've just over and above their weekly giving, just put an automatic payment in. And that meant that by the time we've even come into the space, there's just, well, we had 45000 that we cleared out um, to add to the giving that that came in at that time, but it's since popped back up to about $30,000 plus the money life gave us. So it's sitting at about $40,000 at the moment and that money just keeps coming in, which means we haven't had to, money's actually not been the hold up. Everything else has been the hold up, but we are gonna need more than that to get it done. And there's some people that have already said, look, we're in uh, and we, we know that we can get a significant way through this project, um, but we would invite you to jump on board and be part of what God wants to do in this place and through this place actually. Um, for the community around us. Cool. Thank you very much. Um, we'll, we'll bring you more details as we have them, but hopefully that just wets the taste buds and how exciting is it that that concrete floor is being poured next Saturday. So um, if you're relatively handy too, um, please come and see maybe Jamie after the service. If you've got some time and you'd like to be helpful, we can plug you in with Matt, who's our Waimati, new Waimati campus pastor that God provides. Getting a contract is a disaster, but he is a self-employed builder who is going to drive the work for us at an incredibly reasonable rate and um, means that we don't even have to wait now for labor, but we can actually get straight into it and straight onto it. So very exciting. The other thing we need to talk about in Family Biz is just our finance. Pastor Dawn, I think, raised it uh, 
was I here last week? Two weeks ago uh, when I was here. But just, you know, as a community, we don't actually kind of say, if you're part of us, you need to do this. We don't have that kind of approach to finance here at Connect. But rather we believe there's an invitation just as God's loved us. He invites us to respond with everything, our time, our talent, and our finance. You know, this is the biggest thing that can grab our attention as soon as we get our financial goals and what success looks like. And if once we get to this marker, then then life will be different and we'll be able to do all these benevolent things. But I don't know, I was raised in a way that you just bring, you honour God and your finance right from the start. You've got what you've got and you bring some of that back to the Lord. It's God's um, love towards us and it's our response to Him to include Him in the stewardship of everything that we had. And uh, over this year, uh, for the most part, our finance has been fine, but it's been up and down a little bit, probably more instability than we've had the last 10 years, but that's somewhat to be expected over this season. And if people are helping family in need or whatever, that's great, that's fine. But just need to let you know that um, in July, our giving was about 20% down across our campuses. So um, that, what that means is that, and that was consistent across our churches, so for Timaru, for Tamuka, for Waimati, um, but what that means is that about $6,000 didn't come in that would normally come in over that time. So uh, these are significant sums of money, and um, we're just telling, because it's all of our responsibility, so we're just talking about it as a family, and, um, and if that was to continue, then we'd have to make some pretty major decisions around staffing, around all of those things. We would not be able to c- continue as is. Uh, I can thankfully report things pop back up a bit this month. Woo, thank you, Jesus. And uh, thank you, everyone, for your faithfulness. But I'd invite you, if you're someone that's, um, maybe you've been here, and thank you for your faithfulness. If you've been one of those people that's just plowed all the way through, maybe you had to stop or adjust your giving because you had some big stuff come up. You had a family in need, or you you were ministering to, to members of your your family and helping them put food on the table over a difficult time, great, we're, we're with you we're, we're all for it, but can we invite you again to think about how you're giving and where you're prioritising your finance and we'd say feed your children, please make sure you feed your children first but then think about how you can love your church family as well as we move into what God's got for us together and no point having a beautiful building if we can't pay our bills uh, and those things are, we keep them separate financially. We've got a stack of money there ready to go for the building. But it's so important that we can meet those uh, weekly things as well. Is that all right? Family, honest talk. Is that okay? I can do it. I can promise you we're giving uh, consistently and significantly. And we would invite you um, to partner with us, especially if you, perhaps you're new, you just got on the journey with us. And, um, and you come in and go, oh, this is a pretty cool space. That's because people have faithfully partnered with us to make it happen. And so we invite you, jump on board. The water's fine. Come on in. It's great. Awesome. Cool. That's it. Giving update. No, we're going to jump in. We're going to invite Pastor Jamie to come and to share with us one of the dads of the house uh, on Father's Day. What a legend is Jamie. Why don't you give him a hand as he comes this morning? Cool. Is it weird that I still feel like strange that someone would call me a dad? I feel like I'm still an 18-year-old. Does any other dads feel like it's completely irresponsible that you've been entrusted with children? You're like, I thought fathers were supposed to be like all mature and yeah, <laughs> David Coe, come on. <laughs> um, but what a great privilege it is. And uh, I just, I'm so grateful for the grace and the mercy of God and um, what he's given us to do this. And uh, so I just want to lean into a bit of that this morning. Um, Happy Father's Day to all those dads out there. I hope it's been a great morning already for you. Uh, Please do not be distracted by Matt Donaldson cooking you bacon just out the other side of those doors. Hopefully there's no windows open or I'm going to fully lose your attention. (laughs) And um, please, if there's latecomers that come like three minutes late uh, from the 10.30 finish, just leave them some because they'll be coming throughout the... uh, the interval of where we share the food. We don't devour it in the first three minutes and then laugh at them as they come in. <laughs> We're being second service people. Cool. <laughs> Soon as you lose, that's right. Cool. Um, great. I'd just like to pray before we get in. Um, God, I thank you for your spirit that is with us. Jesus, I thank you for the way you have made for us to have access to our Father in heaven. We thank you for your deep, deep love for us, God. This morning, I pray that beyond what I can articulate, God, your understanding and your words of love would drop into our minds, into our spirits, into our hearts, that, God, you would speak to us, your children. Well, Lord, we love your words. We love your love for us, and we value them more than anything else. So, God, here we are with ears open, hearts open, 
and are willing and wanting you are just to speak in over us in Jesus name amen awesome very good father's day uh, you have a significant irreplaceable role as a dad uh, God's given given us beautiful gifts and uh, we are a gift to him as our father he's He's so grateful. He's preciously in love with us. He's jealous over us. Um, and this morning, I just wanted to speak about um, our connection with the Father. As we've been going through the Sermon on the Mount, this is one of the big key things that's really stuck out to me is Jesus' appreciation for his Father. I don't think I'd seen it really uh, as close, as, as significant as when I read right through and I was like, just the amount of times he's talking about his Heavenly Father, uh, he's really driving home a point that he wants us to have that same connection and relationship that he so appreciated on earth with his heavenly father. And he has made a way for us to find that, to have that. And uh, it's a beautiful gift not to be uh, taken for granted, not to be uh, undervalued. And so I just wanted to highlight that this morning. Um, I realize as I want to do that, it's opening a can of Trinity theology. And I'm really not game on opening that can. But, I, but there's just something in it that you can't not go there. So I'm just going to pray for the grace of God to give us wisdom and understanding together. And uh, I'm certainly not sharing as a qualified person to do that, but just have some key lessons that I've learned and observed. And hopefully you're seeing that too if you're tracking with us in the Sermon on the Mount. I'm sure you will also agree and appreciate Jesus was like, my father is incredibly awesome and I couldn't do any of this without him, are his words, basically. Everything you see is what my father has given me. Everything I do is what I hear him instruct me to do. And it's powerful, and, and we need to know it. Um, Jesus wants us to connect with the father. And then in John, this is going to be in your homework. I'm not preaching um, to unpack John 14, but it's just beautiful. If you take note, for something to read this week, John 14, just read it slowly. Read it and reflect on it. Read it and think about uh, your Father in heaven and how uh, Jesus would want us. He would die for us to be connected with him. Uh, In John 14, 6, it says this, No one comes to the Father but through me. And, And I would even argue that this was one of the primary drivers and motivators for Jesus' life and ministry on earth. Uh, as he went to the cross, I'm sure he was thinking, God, I am grateful for you as my father, and, and I know how much humanity needs that, and I know they can't get it without me doing my part. And uh, so Jesus has paid a high price for this relationship. No one comes to him, the father, without Jesus. So read John 14. It's beautiful. It's poetic. It's profound. It's simple and complex. It's uh, just what I think you need to read with the power of the Holy Spirit to enjoy relationship with God. So take note of that. Awesome. I'm not going to unpack the Trinity this morning. Uh, But because we've worked our way through the Sermon on the Mount, it's become quite evident to me that I don't value uh, the Father the way Jesus wants me to. Uh, I think I don't... I really want to be careful what I say, but I feel like I've really valued the person of Jesus and the cross and, and the death and his resurrection. Uh, but I've not seen perhaps the bigger picture of what Jesus was actually trying to do. And he's incredibly awesome and powerful, powerful but even he said, I'm not good compared to my father. And we hear these scriptures and think, well, that's weird. And that's profound. And, and I know that I love and I appreciate Jesus But um, a lot of what he did was not just for me to be in a relationship with him. It was for me to know my father and to know his father like he knew his father. And, And if you have that lens as you read through the Gospels, honestly, he's just like all about his father. And, uh, and I feel like I've, I've failed to recognize that. And I wonder if perhaps that's rubbed off in the people I've interacted with and even us as a church. And so I think this morning it'd be great for us to just uh, listen to Jesus and uh, think and appreciate um, the Father. Cool. I think there's some reasons um, that I've struggled to recognize that as clearly as Jesus articulates it, um, probably with experience and, 
and our earthly experience of fathers um, can certainly fracture the lens of which um, we would look to our Father in heaven. And I want to just briefly go to Genesis to kind of unpack some of where that first began, the fracturing of our view. Um, So I don't think I have the Genesis verses on there, do I? No. If you've got your Bible, now would be a great time to pull that up. Uh, There's an affirmation and that we desire as children that comes from our broken lens. And we sometimes feel a sense of him being an accuser or a distant critic. But he is a close lover and a present coverer, a pursuer and a protector father of us. God's created us with closeness of relationship at the very core of who we are. Genesis 1, 26. Should be a familiar passage anyway, but look it up and read the words uh, yourself. Then God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness. And this is a beautiful passage that's deeply profound and talks about the relational aspect of God, uh, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Um, And this creation of us to be relational as God is in himself relational. We we hear Jesus talk of his father with um, great appreciation throughout the Gospels. And there's this draw on relationship. And he's created us with similar um, making to be in relationship and desire to desire uh, relationship highly. But we've chosen to go independent Genesis 3, 7 and 8. Flick through there, Genesis 3, 7, 8. 9 and 10, I think it is. Then the eyes of both were opened, and they knew that they were naked. They sewed fig leaves together and made themselves loincloths. They had heard the sound of the Lord walking in the garden in the cool of the day, and the man and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. And he said, I heard the sound of you in the garden, and I was afraid, because I was naked, and I hid myself. And I feel like that's been certainly a bit of my story, when I think of God, I love Jesus, and I just, and I know the pursuit of Jesus in profound ways, but I don't feel the same way about him as Father. And I feel like there's still bits of that. And me, where I would think if he was close, I'm not sure how comfortable I'd be about that. Uh, I love Jesus' closeness. I love the Holy Spirit and his presence and the intimate, like, in, in a dwelling of that. There's just something awkward about Father for me. And I wonder if it's some of just that garden view that we still have kind of nagging at us. Um, yeah, but God invites us back. Things have changed a bit from the garden. They haven't changed completely, but we have fresh opportunity. And Genesis 3.21 is one of the most beautiful short passages. It says, The Lord God made for Adam and for his wife garments of skin and clothed them. Those verses just a little earlier were speaking of fig leaves and loincloths and attempts to cover shame they were very inadequate. And God, because of his love for us, saw that pursuit and brought a covering. And, and it says skin. He made garments of skin. And it's only a very brief passage there, but there's obviously this idea of skin needing to come from an animal and potentially the first uh, slaughter in all creation in order to cover uh, us, to cover our shame to cover our sense of feeling distant, that God would love us and pursue us in such a way is beautiful. And I, th- and I think it's a, it's a foretelling of what he would do with Jesus because we can't get that access without him. No one comes to the Father but through me. No one can not feel shame uh, with fig leaves and loincloths. And neither can we feel comfortable with God as Father without Jesus. And so we're tremendously grateful for him. And there's this obviously this picture of sacrifice um, through the animal, and, and we know that of Jesus for us. 
and he's, this is his pursuit of us. This is how much he wants us close. And he's wanting to uh, take away the shame that would perhaps cause us to walk away. I hope and pray. Uh, so this is my question. How do you come to our Father? Uh, Michelle spoke beautifully of um, the Lord's Prayer last week. And we know the initial address there is our Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. What? Maybe close your eyes for a moment and just um, and think. Often we, we come and we address God, the Holy Spirit, and, and Jesus, our Savior, but perhaps for a moment just consider addressing him, our Father. What goes through your mind when you consider speaking with our Father? I hope and pray that Jesus comes to mind because he is our only access to the Father. Jesus took every opportunity to point to and highlight the strength that he found in his relationship with his Father and uh, where he found his identity. John 14, again, describes so much of the um, appreciation Jesus had for his Father and the relationship he has with him. And, and there's this foreign sense of what the father is like that jesus actually clarifies which is the whole trinity thing that i don't want to open up but you can look at jesus and know that is exactly what the father is like Uh, you don't need to imagine any more than that but there's aspects of him as father that is entirely jesus but there's like this identity thing which i think i don't know but I think is the little difference that the Father has just in terms of even what we know of our lineage, of inheritance, of you know our surnames, all of that stuff. There's identity that comes through our inheritance, like our birth, right? And through our what we inherit from um, fathers. And there's something Jesus spoke very clearly about that. Um, there's the baptism um, description of the Father speaking over the Son. This is my Son in whom I am well pleased just these identity markers where Jesus heard his father speak with identity and it's so important for us to be able to engage with God as father for that identity to be formed in us as his children. Uh, Jesus doesn't just want us to know his resurrection power, he wants us to know and be in close relationship with our father. Uh, I just thought I'd skip through little highlighters from um, the Sermon on the Mount. If you've got your Bibles, do the speed reading. Does anyone remember speed reading? Is it Kevin Trudeau? You wave his hand. Dylan knows. Eh? He's like, yeah, I tried that. <laughs> I used to do speed reading, <laughs> and you absorb the page. How good would that be, eh, Dawn? <laughs> Sean. Sean speed reads, I'm sure. <laughs> Anyways, sidetracked. Um, we're going to speed read through the Sermon on the Mount. I wouldn't recommend it. Um, <laughs> I recommend you read slowly. We've talked to you about that. I don't want to undo what we've taught you about that. Uh, but I just want to grab the snippets of uh, the father statements that Jesus um, draws on and see what we can perhaps surmise from kind of the aspect of him teaching here. Matthew 5, 6 and 7 is where we've been camping. So Matthew five sixteen, good works that give glory to the Father in heaven. 545, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute uh, you to be like sons of the Father who is in heaven. Be, in verse 48, be perfect as your heavenly Father is perfect. 6.1, your righteousness is to be seen, uh, as righteousness to be seen will get no reward from your Father in heaven. Given secret and the Father who sees will reward you. Go into your room. Uh, that's in verse 6-4. Six, 6-6. Six, six. In your room, shut the door and pray to the Father in secret. He will reward. 6-8. Don't pray to be heard. Father knows what you need before we ask. Verse 9 is obviously the Lord's Prayer going through, which Michelle touched on, our Father in heaven. 6-14. Forgiveness is reflected 
us to others as our father as we know our heavenly father's forgiveness toward us 618 is fasting to god in secret 626 our heavenly father feeds and clothes the birds he cares even more for us 632 don't worry our heavenly father knows what we need so seek first the kingdom 711 Father who is in heaven gives good gifts to children who ask. He's the giver of good gifts. 721, entry to the kingdom of heaven for those who do the will of the Father who is in heaven. And at the end, verse 23, I don't hear the words, but I envision the picture of the Father in relationship to uh, never knowing God himself and being able to do many things and calling him Lord and Saviour, but not knowing him. And I I just think, like, there's so many references there. Jesus is great, and we worship him, but we are to be drawn through him, to be given access to the Father. Uh, and as I hear this, uh, as, as you would have read there and heard as well, um, he's not just referred to as Father. There is this... Very common phrase, heavenly father. And it caught my attention as I went through, looking back at all the references, I was like, wow, it was like 90% of the references to father, he's heavenly father. And, and as I thought about it, I thought again to the garden, and I thought uh, about the separation I feel, like this location separation as heavenly father, for some reason in my mind, I think distant father, I think not here father. Uh, but I don't think that is the reference Jesus is bringing there. Um, yes, there is a sense of Holy Spirit with us and Father having a perspective that is not just limited to here on earth, uh, but the Father being over all and, and seeing all. Uh, and I think that this Heavenly Father description is speaking about uh, a recognition of his not being limited to earth the way that we are. And this heavenly perspective, this goodness that exceeds, uh, you know, the corruption of earth. It's this heavenly character that he has as father of us in all perfection and with goodness that we, we actually can't comprehend because we look around and evaluate goodness with earthly perspective. And he's speaking about heavenly father, this holy father who would be able to come and invade our world but from a place of um, heavenliness, if that's a word. Um, and I think he's highlighting his greatness. He's highlighting his, his goodness. And Jesus very clearly throughout that sermon um, talks about closing the gap that we kind of sense of separation of, of greatness and goodness being, oh, I can't have anything to do with me, being closed by the power of prayer. And, and that is kind of the crux of the, um, the Lord's Prayer, is this bring heaven to earth. And it's this closing of the gap. I can't do this just on earth. And, and if we are removed from earth, earth's not going to get what it needs from heaven. And so we lock in with prayer. And we go, I'm going to relate to my Father through prayer. And, and I think it's a really key time for us as a church. I've, I've been really challenged um, since since the Sermon on the Mount, we're sort of digging into doing it as a church um, probably six months ago, eight months ago now. And man, it's just been so challenging uh, that God wouldn't be this theoretical idea for me to apply through my thoughts, but he would be a person I would engage with in prayer. And that would kind of be the measure of anything he would do with me, would be my willingness to be close to him in prayer. And Jesus completely points that out in the secret place go and shut the door don't do things for people to see this is about the way that you relate to me and my father and uh, and i love it and jesus helps us with this um jesus valued uh the greater relationship with his father against all distraction on earth we know he retreated to quiet places we know in the garden he he prayed and and blood sweat from him because he was in the absolute tension of on earth 
but in connection to Heavenly Father. And, um, and we see the beauty of prayer and valuing God um, as Father. Romans 8.34 uh, talks about Jesus as intercessor. I think I do have that one up there. And, and I think if we don't pray, we will feel distant. Uh, and I challenge you, if you're feeling distant from God, start talking with him. Even if it feels like talking with yourself, he hears you. He hears you. And it's like any sort of friendship and relationship. The more time you spend, the more you will get to know, the more you will allow yourself to be known, and, and the more familiar it will feel to know him as father and to pray with him. Romans 8.34, who is to condemn? Christ Jesus is the one who died. More than that, who was raised, who is at the right hand of God, who indeed is interceding for us. This is the access. I spoke at youth a couple of weeks ago about the, the bridge and the divide that we would feel, the separation, the, the heavenly and earthly gap that we feel, that we see around us, that we see the lack of. Jesus would put himself in that place. Uh, God knew that this would happen. In the garden, obviously, uh, it's described beautifully through the picture of the fig leaves and the loincloths being stitched, and God saying, no, I can cover this gap for you. I can bridge this. But you've got to rely on me in order to know that you can connect with the Father. And there's this just beautiful um, picture that Jesus has drawn and outlaid through this the story of God for us, and he's still doing it in the same way. He is bridging that gap, and he would call us to come to him through him with access to say, our Father in heaven, thank you for being in relationship with me. John 1 describes our identity as children of God through belief and by God. John 1, 9 to 13 says this, the true light, which gives light to everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to his own, and his own people did not receive him. But to all who did receive him, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of flesh, nor the will of man, but of God. We've been created for this. Your existence is not just because mum and dad decided. God decided. This was not the will of flesh. It was the will of God that you would be sons and daughters, that we could call him father. How, how incredible is that? We give a lot of credit to our lineage and our existence, what we've received, and I'm going to be brutally honest, and, and God's been wrecking me here too. Um, some of you know my mum passed away just about, I think coming up four years ago now, uh, in a car accident, and um, a massive part of my grief journey has been losing some of the goodness of God that mum brought to me and to our kids. That's been a, a huge part of that is seeing the, the hole that's been left in my children, thinking about this the provision of God that my mum was. And, and I've reflected on that, and it's, it's caused a bit of bitterness in my grief because I attach so much of God's goodness in my life to my mum. And my mum was incredible, and God actually um, spoke to me at the hui in Te Horinga. Uh, in a most profound way in worship. Um, and I don't think it was coincidental that it was at um, the hui up there because uh, about a year earlier, I'd been out to the marae out of whenua and um, it had just sort of come up that I had some Māori heritage that um, from my dad's side that I needed to appreciate and needed to discover some more about and find out about. And I kind of just was like, wow, that's really cool. Oh, when I get some time, we'll do some research into that. And I didn't at all connect the dots to this bigger picture. And then at the Hui, 
uh, God was challenging me on how I was viewing the loss of mum. And, um, and he clearly spoke to me, nothing's been lost of what I want to give you through your mum's passing. Uh, everything that she had of me that she gave you uh, was a gift to her too. Um, she was an incredible woman with courage and, and obedience and faith like, like no one else, but she also received that. And that same gift is a gift for me. And it's a gift for my children. And, and God's like, so actually, perhaps you're going to limit some of that if you keep this bit of twisted perspective of grief and what I'm limited to doing because of how you see it. And it was so challenging. And I read this passage and I am so encouraged that God works. God works incredibly in our lineage, but... He works through it, not us working it out, making it happen, and it being conditional on how things work out, with perhaps separations is a big part of um, some of how we see the fractured view of how we think God would do things, and we see grief as a part of that, and, and ruptured relationships, and we think, oh, because it's not the, you know perfect, God won't use it. But God is the master of using mess, and grief, and conflict, and fractured relationships, in, in better ways than we could dream or imagine. And I just, so I wanted to encourage you this morning, um, let's father beyond our natural inheritance. Let's father beyond our earthly ability to do it. Because we actually have a far greater inheritance than any of our bloodline could give us uh, when God is involved and he's appointed it and he's willed it and he's called it for us to step into uh, this is not the will of the flesh, nor the will of man, but of God, that we would be called in as sons and daughters. And uh, so I just want to encourage you that with that this morning, that we would connect with our Father and know identity from Him speaking over us as sons and daughters. Can I pray? Lord, we thank you for your grace on our lives, your mercy from the beginning of time, Lord. Lord, there's so many in this room and you've been working in the most beautiful, profound ways, God, through our parents, through our parents' parents. And we do not take that for granted, but Lord, we do not limit it by the decisions of man. Because so much of this you have called into place and you have chosen us by name, God, even as we sung that song this morning. I'm a child of God. Lord, may you, even today as we reflect with a, a different view, God, may we appreciate you as Father, as Father who has called us as children. We thank you, Jesus, for bridging the gap that we could not make approach. We could not connect with our God as Father without you. And we thank you, Jesus, for your covering on us. You're making way, you're drawing in your invitation to us. Holy Spirit, we thank you that uh, we don't have to understand completely uh, the Trinity to appreciate who you are to us. Father, Son, Holy Spirit, come and have your complete work in our lives. Lord God, we pray. And let that have ripples through our families as we parent, as we are um, relating to people around us. God, may we be known as your children as ones with the perfect Father. In Jesus' name. Amen. Awesome. Thanks, Jamie. What a great encouragement. Don't you love just how different our team are all wide? And uh, everyone brings just a different part of the heart of God. And I just love when our shepherds get on the mic, our pastors, and they always just speak the relational nature of God and just the heart of God. And I just... Love it, just connects in such a, a precious way. Thanks, Jamie, for always sharing so authentically, even out of your own journey and someone that's walked that with you. Um, man, it's just exciting um, to hear those uh, pearls of wisdom that have actually been um, uh, walked out in very real ways, just shared. You know, there's two um, lessons in life, wisdom or consequences. Um, wisdom is when you learn from the journeys of others and take it on board and integrate it. Don't be like me. Don't be that person that has to learn everything for yourself. Uh, don't, don't do that. <laughs> don't be like me and Mona. 
Uh, she's apparently in my camp as well. So, yeah, um, let's lean into, let's be inspired by others and let's see what we can learn. And not just go and go, oh, that was nice. It's like, actually, what's in there? What's God saying to me? What can I apply in my life differently? Because anyone want to work closer and just deeper with God? I know I do. The more that I journey, the more I just desperately know that I need him. The more I'm even aware of my own um, capabilities and strength, I'm still more dependent on who he is, and I just need him desperately. So I encourage you to engage with that beyond today um, as, as you um, jump back into your prayer life, and um, it'd be awesome. Hey, a couple of things you need to know. Firstly, you need to know my apology from my previous announcement. So I said that there was a giving number for the building on the website. There isn't. There's just general admissions. I've since checked it up. But we do have these wonderful envelopes that um, you can designate money towards building. Um, but actually, you can just put it in the general account if you're wanting to give to the building and just tag it building. Um, and then our wonderful finance team uh, will get back to you probably with the right number if you're wanting to set up an automatic payment or something like that. Um, but other than that, a couple of things we need to know. We need a few um, kids' church workers. We've got an amazing bunch of uh, kids here at Connect. And uh, if you would like to serve them and love on them in practical ways by helping to um, share and reinforce the stories of God to them on our time together on a Sunday morning, Pastor Michelle would love to see you. She's out there uh, doing that work faithfully this morning. And I know that's a joy for her, but we've got a great team, Nolene and others uh, as well, who just lead the teams uh, out there fantastically. The other thing, uh, since Michelle seems to want to be very popular by her many mentions in the notices today, uh, if you're interested in doing some u paid youth work in our high schools, that's right, a ministry opportunity paid to work with uh, a presence-based youth work 24-7 in our high schools to actually bring just encouragement to come alongside some young people who are struggling, um, just literally going into high school in lunch times and just being available to chat to people. Um, it's a cooperative venture from the churches across Timaru. We've had two funded youth workers, a guy and a girl, in Mountain View High School, and they've both had major change of circumstances in the last, like, three months. One went into the police force, and the other one has moved into full-time employment in the same field rather than just doing 10 hours a week. So... Um, could you come and see uh, Michelle or actually probably any of the pastoral team and we can link you in if Michelle is busy. If that's something that you'd be interested in or know someone who might be um, interested in that. It's a really strategic opportunity for us as a church. Uh, the other thing, so that's 24-7. I don't know if there's any of the PowerPoints for these. Um, last one is the, twin, the New Testament Intensive with Dr. Sean DeToy. Uh, this will be well worth your time. We're good. Okay. Uh, it'll be well worth your time. It's around the New Testament. I think I saw something about Revelation, something about the Johan Johannine literature. Is that what's it? And Matthew. Yeah. But basically, if you want to know how God was before everything, Sean's going to be explaining that. Where was God before his God? How did he get here? What does that mean for me? How do I get God to do what I want? All of those will be unpacked in detail by Dr. Sean the Toy. Mm. <laughs> Pretty much, that's how our relationship works. Uh, so <laughs> yeah, but actually, if you want to go deeper in the understanding of the Scripture, it's so incredibly important. Um, I'm a Pentecostal through and through. I'm a Pentecostal pastor's kid, and I love the Spirit, and I love the presence of God, but I can tell you the most transformative journey I've ever been on within my journey with Christ has been my theological one is understanding rightly the scripture and applying it rightly so that I can actually get the transformation it promises when applied correctly. That has changed and reframed my world completely, and I'm deeply, deeply grateful for it. So important that the people of God know the story of God so that we can live out of it rightly. Is that better? Yeah. Thanks, mate. Yeah, good. <laughs> you can hook me up afterwards. But if you want to know how God was there before everything else, Sean's definitely your guy. Um, Youth camp. Youth camp. Uh, it's coming up in the uh, second week of the school holidays, isn't it? In October. It's going to be incredible. The ninth, uh, ninth to the 4th? That's not going to work. Oh, no. 31st of September till the 1st. No. Oh, yeah, I'll go with you. 11th till the 14th of October. Sponsorship is $95. If you haven't got a youth but you would like to help send a youth, um, you can sponsor a kid to come to camp, and it's always great. We've got a very generous community, and we 
um, normally able to make sure everyone can get there and that cost is not prohibitive. Um, now, we've got um, tea and coffee, and it's going to be amazing time fellowship together. Plus, we also have our Father's Day bacon bake.